Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. I'm going to start looking at video with machine learning, how to process video and how to deal with video in general. This is a foundational video where we start the process. So there's two ways really to deal with video from a machine learning standpoint. There is offline where you're using something like FFmpeg to rip video apart, put it back together. And then there's real time where you're using something like OpenCV to get video right from a camera, live processing it and sending it out as it goes. This video is going to start with offline where we're processing video that was recorded to a video file and we're doing various things with it. So I'm going to show you how to get to that video and work with it and then put it back to another video as the output. I'll deal with real time as well. That'll be in another video. It, when I produce that, I'll add a link to that type of processing in the description. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. So this is kind of a new series of videos that I'm putting together on video processing with machine learning. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, definitely click the like for this video. Let me know in the comments because believe me, that's what I look at to determine what I'm going to do videos on next. And of course, it's got to be something that I am interested in. If you want to learn how to crochet, you can put it in the comments all you want. Not going to happen. So here you see a collab notebook that I've created. You can run this from really anything. You don't have to use collab. I'm going to use collab because it's got a GPU. It's got kind of everything that I want to have to show you how to do this. I'm going to show you three notebooks in this video. The first one is just the most basic. Let's string a bunch of images together using FFmpeg. I do this a lot in my videos. I will produce a series of videos that or a series of images that when linked together produce motion and let you see something. One that I use this on and I got several comments asking how to do this is where I did a morph from one GAN face into another. So let's see exactly how to do this. I'm going to focus more on the FFmpeg part but let's just see first how you would generate the faces. So I am going to First of all, I've got to open this in Colab. I was looking at it on GitHub. All right, we are in Colab. You can save it to Drive if you want to be making changes to it. I'm just going to use it in the play, play box, sandbox right now. I'm going to run this part. I do trust my own code. And it does use TensorFlow 1.x because I'm using StyleGAN just to generate a bunch of these images. And as of the recording of this, NVIDIA has not moved StyleGAN 2 onto TensorFlow 2. I'm going to check out StyleGAN 2 so I can generate some faces. Just check to see that it showed up where it did. Let me actually expand this a little bit so we use the whole YouTube space. Now I'm going to put it into the path so that I can actually see it. I'm going to run this code here that just defines a couple of functions that will generate these faces. So I'm going to generate a whole bunch of faces as I move the vector from one face to the to another. Now I am going to actually run this part that gets my two prototype seeds. So I'm using seed 100 and seed 860. Now both of these two expand out to fill up the latent vector and I'm going to slowly transist the latent vector from seed 100 to seed 860. As you slowly change the latent vector, it slowly transforms into another image. If you change this the seeds, those are just random number generators. There's nothing gradual about it. Seed 100 could be a child and seed 101 could be an old man. You just don't know. But by getting those seeds out of there as latent vectors, I can move slowly from one latent vector to the other and look at what happens to the image. It takes this a moment to go. We'll fast forward through this. Okay, that's done. Now we're going to do the morph step. This is where I basically take 300 steps and I look at the difference between those two seed vectors that I have and I slowly transform the one vector into the other latent vector. You can see this running. This takes a moment because this is literally generating a GAN on every single image. Now, what is important that I did here too is normally there's some degree 
degree of randomness in a GAN. So this randomness here, even if you have the same seed for it, so say this was seed 100, this will interject some randomness so it's still the same face. So if you if you vary the seed around, you'll see their hair wave and other interesting things. We want this very consistent, so it's a nice gradual morph. Okay, this takes a little bit to go through completely 300 images, so let's fast forward. Okay, so that's done. What we're going to do next is run FFmpeg to take all of those images that we generated. This is basically just a directory full of images. We're going to run FFmpeg. The rate is going to be 30 frames per second. That's pretty standard in video. The input is going to come from this temp directory that I wrote those all out to up there. And we're expecting the new named image hyphen one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. And they're all PNG files. The video codec that we're going to output to is MPEG-4, and the output file name is going to be GAN Morph MPG. Let me go ahead and run this. Now while this is running, this is basically something that you're running from the command line, and that's what the exclamation point means in Jupyter. So this is something that you need to install. The instructions are a little different for Windows, Mac, and Linux, so I'm not going to show how to actually install it. If you run into problems with that, I guess I could produce a video on that. Let me know in the comments if that is is something you'd want to see, but I found it usually to be a pretty simple install. I use Brew to install it on Mac and I, Windows, there's an install program for it, and Linux, you'd, you'd use it through yum or apt-get or whatever package manager you're using in that operating system. So these are the results that it shows you, and the video has been created. I can download it using this command in Colab, and if I run it just by clicking it, you can watch it slowly transist from one face into a completely different one. It's pretty cool. It's doing a morph, essentially. Now, it can only morph between seeds that you give it. If you wanted to morph between two real faces, that's another entire story that I might look at in the future. Again, let me know in the comments if that's interesting to you. So now, that was fun. We basically used FFmpeg to build up something from a bunch of images. I use this command a lot, and I think you might find this, this useful in your own machine learning and AI adventures as you perhaps get a bunch of images together and you want to put them together. Now let's look at how to rip a image apart and put it back and keep the audio synced. That's sometimes the challenging. First, let's look at a very basic example. So this is a basic video. This is doing augmented reality, which is something I'm very interested in. We'll do more complicated videos on augmented reality. And again, if this is something you're interested in, let me know with a like and a comment on this video. First, what I am going to do is, so I'm giving you a chance to upload a video here. I'm going to run it anyway, and this is in Colab, but you can modify this to run outside of Colab. This just lets you pick a video that you want to augment. And the video that I'm choosing here is Demo Sync. You'll see this in a moment. It's a very short video that I recorded. It takes it a little bit to upload. It's not terribly long, but you can definitely upload longer videos to this as well. Be aware though, with longer videos, you are going to break this into individual images, one for each frame. So you get a directory full of files real quickly. Now, I typically break my videos that I'm going to process in this way into short segments, and then I take the output video, and I actually put that right in as a track into Camtasia or whatever video editing software that I'm using. So let's just go ahead and fast forward this. This takes a moment. Now I go ahead and define this execute command function that you see here. Let's go ahead and run that. What this does is captures the output from when I run ffmpeg to temp.txt. I want this output so that I can parse through it and find things like frame rate. It also allows me to actually see the output because in Jupyter you won't see the output when a command runs in Google Colab. So that's just the, the way that this one is. If you have an improvement, if you have a way that you, I wouldn't have to do this in Colab, definitely push a change. I would love to see that. Now that's created. 
I'm going to run this block of code here that is basically going to call FFmpeg to basically rip apart that video and get all of the images out of it, the individual frames. It doesn't take real long to do this. You can see the output here from FFmpeg. F, the way that I'm running this, so the output goes to the temp file. You don't actually see the output until it's completely done. That's great for debugging, but it really gives you nothing as far as watching the progress of this. So if you run this on a bigger video, it's gonna seem like it's locked up. It's just sitting there. Trust me, it's still going, it's doing things. But you see essentially here is the command in FFmpeg. You could run this, yourself if you wanted to from a command prompt, not even using Python. What I am doing here is I'm taking the input from the movie file that I uploaded. It can deal with quite a few input types. It can do MP4s, movies, various things. Three is the quality. Three is a pretty good standard number for that. You can read up in the FFmpeg docs for higher or lower quality. Then I am going to output them to my temp directory and they're going to be named input one, two, three, four, five. I hide the banner. That's pretty standard in FFmpeg. It's, it's text output basically. And it goes through and it creates a directory full of JPEG files. Oh, the other thing that's important too that this is, now this is just the video. JPEGs don't hold any audio. So that is what I do in this next part. The code for it was actually up here. I do the second FFmpeg and here I'm extracting the audio file. So I've got an audio file, a WAV file, and I've got a bunch of images. Now I'll be able to put that back and maintain the synchronization with the audio, which is, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna run just my utility to display the, the date or how far in we are on timing. So now I'm running this process. Let's get it kicked off and then I'll explain actually what's going on. So it's processed 100 images. We are three seconds into this very short video that's only about 10 seconds. It'll go through this and it'll be done before I even explain what's going on here. So what I'm going to do is take this video of my dog and I sitting on the couch and I'm going to display a yellow ball that just bounces around on there. I'm just showing that I have the ability to modify the video and write it back out to a video file maintaining full HD resolution and keeping the audio synced. So what I do is I I got the frame rate earlier. That was done in that code where I was calling FFmpeg. I parse the output from it and I extract the frame rate. I keep track of how many videos. And by the way, I divide the frame rate by a thousand because there's a thousand milliseconds in a second. I'm gonna have the ball bouncing around. I base the ball's speed on the frame rate. Otherwise, it'll go really, really fast if you change the frame rate or slow if you change the frame rate. I want it to be agnostic of the frame rate. The ball has an X and a Y position and it has an X and a Y speed. So if there's speed in both X and Y, which is always the case, it's going to be moving diagonally. I read my input file, I read my, I set up the file name for my input, I set up the file name for my output, I check to see that the input exists because if it doesn't, we've hit the end and we're done. But I read it in as an image, I load it, I get the height and width of the image. It'll be a full HD frame, so it's gonna be decently big. I calculate the ball width. I want the ball to take up about 10% of the image. This makes it agnostic of how high a resolution you were dealing with, which is always good. You don't want the ball to be microscopic on HD and gigantic on 720 or, or something else. I use pill to do this. I'll probably do another entire video on directly modifying images with pill. That's important if you want to be doing augmented reality sort of things. I simply draw an ellipse with yellow color and yellow outline so that there's no outline essentially. I move the ball in the two directions and if the ball has wrapped off the screen, I make it bounce. I keep the update and I update every 100 frames and you can see that here. Now I'm going to build the video file. I use FFmpeg again. This thing's a Swiss army knife with video. The frame rate is going to be the same as what it was encoded to, most likely 30 frames. There's two inputs now, the directory that has those output images and the audio file. This is the quality and I write it to this output path. Now the file names are important. If we go back up here, 
to where I was processing them. I have a bunch of files named input JPEG that come from the video file, and then I have a bunch of output files. Those all come from the process that I have down here. It's saving them. This is important. I don't want to just overwrite the input file because then I have to re-decompress and rerun it. When I'm debugging this and making my code do what I want, I tend to rerun this a whole bunch of times and sometimes just look at the frames. That's much quicker to get an idea of if it's doing what I really want it to do. So it's built the whole video. It's not very long. It's about 10 seconds. So, so 300 or so images. I'm going to go ahead and download it. This takes a moment, I'll fast forward that. And now we have the file downloaded. I'll go ahead and play this. As you can see, this is just my dog and I on... I'll go ahead and play it. I'll let the audio from the video actually play so that you can see that my lips are fully synced up. Because when you're running something through augmented reality, it's important that you synchronize the sound so that my lips are actually lining up to what I'm saying. Okay, so that was pretty cool, just a bouncing ball. You can use this as a starting point though. Do whatever modification you want to to the image. You can go totally Hollywood special effects nuts if you want to. I didn't look at the actual original images, but you can certainly use them. You can do that to enhance what's actually on the video. Now let's go ahead and see how to do that and use YOLO in conjunction with this. I've never been too happy with YOLO built in in video encoding because for one it does it drops the audio track so I'm left to manually resync that myself and two often it drops the image quality so let me show you how to actually convert a YOLO into video so that it draws the boxes around what it thinks everything is and we maintain full HD resolution and we keep the audio completely synced with no work on my part I like no work on my part so go ahead and choose that same file we'll upload it we use demo sync again. Takes us just a moment to upload. We'll go ahead and fast forward through this. Okay, so that's done. The video is uploaded. Now, Colab does let you upload more than one video at a time. I don't do anything to support that, so only upload one video using my code. Or you might not even be using Colab. You can pull this code out and turn it into a Python file, and it works pretty much the same. This is the same execute command that I had in the previous part of this video. No difference here. I do have the video hard-coded in there. I'll fix that so that it uses the one that was actually uploaded. Let me go Go ahead and run this. What it's doing now is basically using FFmpeg to rip the video completely apart just like we did before and we get the frame rate and all of that out of the output that's given here. Now we're going to use YOLO. Eve, this part is pretty quick. We just download YOLO and make use of it. We make sure that we're using TensorFlow 2. Going to run this part. This can take a little bit so we're going to go ahead and fast forward this. It's saying it'll take about six minutes minutes. This is just loading the pre-trained weights for YOLO. Believe me, you don't want to build your own weights if the existing ones will work for you. Might do a video sometime on custom training for YOLO. It's kind of interesting. It's also important to note that all of this is occurring inside of the virtual machine. So that's why we've got to download this each time. This makes it very quick to actually run, but you do have to download it to the disk of the virtual machine. Also, if your video is very large, you'll exhaust this space. So in that case, I really really, really recommend not doing any more than maybe five to 10 minute video clips at once. If you're gonna do longer than that, then you probably want to be running this on a local machine or a Amazon EC2 instance of some sort. Okay, it's warning me that I'm not using a GPU, but utilizing a GPU runtime, I will be momentarily. Okay, it's done. We have the YOLO weights now. Then I convert them into a form that TensorFlow can actually make use of. This part goes relatively quick, but I'll still fast forward. Okay, that's complete. Now we just want to set up YOLO before we actually do the frame conversion. We don't have to want to have to rerun this on every single frame. That would be slow. I'll fast forward this. This takes a moment. Okay, it's done. My time formatter. 
this first part processes the image and then the rest just loops through before. This is just like the fairly simple case. We have the input files, we have the output files, and we're going to loop over the whole thing and process it. Each time calling process image, which is actually doing the YOLO decoding and drawing the outputs. Now what's important here is I'm drawing the outputs on the original image. So even though YOLO requires a downsample usually to process an image, so we're taking the HD video that I shot and making it very low resolution, it just expands the boxes and blows it back out to the full resolution. We're not actually detecting in HD. That would take a lot more processing time. It certainly could be done, but you'd have to train your own YOLO to do that. Okay, it's almost done. It's about 300 frames. I'll fast forward. All right, 323 total. Let's go ahead and build the video file using an FFmpeg command like we did before. No difference here. We're putting the audio back in, keeping the frame rate that lets everything be nice and synchronized. Now, depending on the size of your video, this can take considerably more time. These are short videos, so it's it's taken a couple of minutes on each one, but we'll continue to fast forward. And you see the output at the very, very end. Let's go ahead and download the video file. Once that downloads, I'll let you watch as it plays. Again, notice that the audio is fully synced and it's high definition. Because when you're running something through augmented reality, it's important that you synchronize the sound so that my lips are actually lining up to what I'm saying. Okay, I really like this as a way to do YOLO on a video file because it keeps it high resolution and the audio stays with it. I don't have to do anything to resync. Thank you for watching this video and if you want to see more video related videos uh, with machine learning, please click the like button and let me know in the comments. Thank you very much and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.